the FIFA World Cup is live on Sky Sports. Oh, See every game of football's ultimate showcase. Glorious! You need to subscribe to Sky's Tutter and Sky Sport to watch this premium content. For details, see sky.co.nz. Welcome to Football Fever with Jason Pine. by News Talk ZB and Sky Sport, the home of the FIFA World Cup, all 64 matches live. Welcome to Football Fever, your daily World Cup podcast, powered by Sky Sport, all 64 matches live. Jason Pine, David Choke, breaking down day two in Qatar. We saw the first match in Group B, England making a statement and putting six past Iran on Sky Sport. Well, Billiam's in there! His first England goal. Maguire does well and battered in by Saka. England tighten their grip. And Kane across and another. What a goal. What a goal. Beautifully constructed and tremendously finished by Raheem Sterling. Wonderful dancing feet. And it's another goal. Bukayo Saka at the double for England. An opportunity for Rashford. On he goes. It's five for England. Instant impact. Grealish is there. Makes it six. A couple of second half goals for Iran, but only consolations, really. England really bossed this, Chody, didn't they? Yeah, I'm, we'll start with an apology. I had them going through by an odd goal, you know, a slow start, a stodgy England. Well, was I wrong? I mean, what, what happened to this match? 30 minutes in, it was looking sort of a bit that way, and you thought, oh, well, what's going on? Six goals. Harry Kane doesn't score, and England uh, Bolton, and the two flattered. Didn't it? The second one was a penalty late on. Um, you'd, you'd say just a stunning start. And all the young guns firing. Um, if you're an England fan, much to be pleased about. Absolutely. They've already started singing It's Coming Home in the uh, streets of London and Birmingham and Manchester and other places as well. England completed 366 passes in the first half alone. Iran just 46 couple of guys I want to get your view on. Bellingham and Saka. Thought they were both, as you say, young guns. Both excellent. Next generation, aren't they? Um, Bellingham, uh, for me, looks, he looks like a footballer, smells like a footballer, is a footballer. Yeah. Um, and uh, his first goal, the headed goal, lovely turn towards goal. Hard to do. Um, very, very nice. So Bellingham, um, class. And Saka, absolutely out of this Arsenal side that are playing some good football. High on confidence. Uh, and again, uh, looking the part. So... Yeah, the future looks bright. They, they, these guys are uh, starting their England careers, but starting them the right way. Absolutely. Bellingham, of course, has never played in the Premier League, playing as football in Germany. I think the last guy who played for England at a World Cup without playing in the Premier League was Owen Hargraves, and he uh, turned out to be a pretty good player. Uh, Saka, by the way, the first Arsenal player to score a World Cup goal for England since Sol Campbell in 2002. So uh, Arsenal, it's all um, coming up roses for them. Marcus Rashford came on, scored a goal after 49 seconds, the third quickest goal. I like the impact of guys like Rashford and Foden and Grealish. They've, they've got a... Oh, look, I don't want to get too carried away, Chody, but, you know, it was a good first-up effort. It was. Um, and think about uh, a player like Sterling, who is out of sorts for, for Chelsea, sort of a bit confused in where he's supposed to play. The finish at the near post was Raheem Sterling of old, wasn't it? A ball in at the near post and he flashes it home with the wrong foot, with the outside of the wrong foot technically. Yeah. But that's that's him, isn't it? He's he's a he's a, a real threat. And as you say, the likes of Foden not getting a start, Grealish a quality player not getting a start, Rashford coming off the bench and all contributing. Against uh, just let's temper ourselves against an Iranian side that um, Barring Taremi with a couple of goals, who will be satisfied, they'll be very, very dissatisfied. Queiroz, their manager, uh, is renowned for sort of laying out a pretty sort of good shop. That wasn't a great shop, and I notice uh, they didn't sing their national anthem. I just wonder if it's the happiest camp. We shall see. Yeah, we shall see indeed. And uh, they had um, had misfortune early on, didn't they? Their goalkeeper took an awful, awfully sickening clash to the head, was down. He went down, they, they tended to him, he got back up again, tried to carry on and then kind of self-diagnosed himself. It was all, I don't know, we, we talk a lot about concussion and other codes, I wonder about the protocols here. Yeah, there definitely needs an HIA on that one. Um, he had a, a reasonably sized nose that protected him but put it on damage to the person he struck. When you saw the challenge, it was sickening because none of them were aware of it. The ball flashed across the face of goal, their eyes turned towards goal and then all of a sudden you've got head-to-head -head clash or nose-to-head clash, it was full on in the face. It was horrific. I'd say he busted his nose, but I don't think that's what stopped him playing. I think it was the, the concussion. And, yeah, I'm a bit fascinated by the old HIA in football. It sort of seems to be a bit of a 
a bit of a gap. Yeah, it does indeed. Um, and that led to a lot of added time at the end of the first half and the second half, actually. I think I've got this right. They added 14 minutes at the end of the first half and 11, which became 13 at the end of the second. Jody, that's 27 minutes of added time. Yeah, typically the ball's hardly in play for 27 minutes, so it's extra at half of football. I mean, sapping enough. I imagine the air-conditioned um, stadia. I uh, heard Rude Hullett on TV saying it's actually quite cold on the pitch, um, so maybe that's helping them out. But uh, I never liked 90, Piney. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't want an extra 27. Gareth Southgate became the first England manager to have a team that scores four or more goals in a World Cup game more than once. Of course, they also did it against Panama in 2018 when they won 6-1 in group play. He wasn't, though, entirely happy. I didn't like the end of the game. To concede two goals the way we did isn't the level that we need. Yeah, we're going to have to be better than we were today in certain aspects of our game against the USA because they're going to be coming for us full throttle and we're going to have to reset. That's Gareth Southgate with some comments after the game and he talked about the USA there um, and... Well, he hadn't seen the USA play when he made those comments, but said, look, they'll be coming for us. I want to jump onto that game, the USA against Wales. Best game of the three today, I think. USA in the first half, did the occasion get to Wales? They were were hardly there. Really passive, weren't they, in the first half? They dropped off. In reading before the game, you knew that Wales played this counter-attacking game. They sort of suck you in rope-a-dope and then hit you on the break. Well, they forgot the second part of the story. They didn't hit anyone on the break. They did drop off and drop off and drop off. They dropped into their own third with sort of these banks of defensive units um, and gave the ball and gave the initiative to the States. And the States looked good, slick, without creating... Heaps of chances. The goal was beautiful, wasn't it? What a oh, lovely goal. I love goals like that. People at full flight and full, you know, um, flow, if you like. And then the finish with the outside of the foot under the on-rushing keeper. Those goals are dream goals for me. I love them. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Pulisic uh, to, to Weyer. Uh, lovely goal to make it. Uh, 1-0 to the US. The first player to score against Wales in the World Cup since Pelé. Obviously, Wales haven't been there since 1958. I think Brazil might have won it that year with a, a 17-year-old Pelé getting a couple of goals in the final. Much better in the second half, weren't they, Wales? What did you see from them that changed? Well, they, they clearly got a message at halftime to be less passive across the board. They, they tried to get themselves on the front foot, so their physicality went up one. They went to a different line up front, which gave them another outlet, gave um, them some targets up top. I just thought they wrestled their way into the back and actually sort of almost outpassioned um, the States in the second half. So it was sort of their energy that got them going. They wrestled the initiative, but again, didn't create any chances. And interestingly, I was sitting there at about the 75th minute going, gee, Gareth Bale's done nothing. Well, Gareth Bale, you can't keep him out of the headlines. Um, a striker's penalty, that you know that, eh, Piney? You put your foot in between, you get anything in between, yep. and your big dopey centre-half comes through the back here. You know, uh, it's a dream for a centre-forward. And then the penalty, high, hard, and handsome into the top corner. He scored some very important goals in his time. <laughs> Gareth Bale will take the headlines, but the Welsh, they'll be singing from... Uh, from Clanethley to what's the other end of Wales, they'll be they'll be loving it, and and it's a romantic story. So good on the Welsh for resting their way back into it and keeping themselves well alive in that group. Yeah, from maybe Clanethley to Cardiff, perhaps it was a great penalty from Gareth Bale. I saw the US protesting. It's a stone cold penalty, isn't it? Yeah, did it. Um, and, and a penalty that you know you're going to get, I think if you're a striker, you know if you can get yourself in between them and the ball, he's coming for you. They can't help themselves, the big centre-backs, can they? They, they? they sight the ball. He was, look, he was playing at the ball, but he's come through the back of the leg. There was no doubt that that was the first contact. Yeah, stone cold. <laughs> And in between those two games, the uh, the England-Iran game and the USA-Wales game out of uh, Group B was the second game in Group A. Senegal against the Netherlands, first ever meeting between these two. The Netherlands winning it 2-0, leaving it late with goals in the 84th and then deep into uh, stoppage time. Uh, Cody Gakpo with the header, nice goal. And then Davy Klaas and the substitute running on to a pass from uh, Memphis or a rebound of Memphis to Pai shot to, to add a second. Um... I don't know, this game meandered a bit for me. Yeah, it did, and and I expected more from the Dutch. I was sort of a bit excited when you look at their roster, you go, they've got some players, these guys. Um, clearly, Depay is their sort of talisman, um, and without him, I don't know that they looked the part. Um, so, yeah, they sort of... They sort of splattered their way forward, and and, and it was yeah it wasn't wasn't the prettiest of matches. 
the 2 0 probably flattered because it was last kick of the game stuff, wasn't it? Mm. Um, Mendy with a terrible save, by the way. It was a parry directly into, I mean, put it wide, try and do something else because it wasn't a rasping shot that he, that he got down to. It was a pretty ordinary shot that he got down to, and he'll reflect on that, I think, poorly. But the game was gone. It was uh, last kick of the game, 2 0. The Dutch will go home happy, but they'll need to improve if they're going to go deep. Yeah, they've only got to play uh, Qatar, of course, and Ecuador. Went over Qatar, seems likely they'll get out of that group and um, and uh, and march on Group B uh, after a game each. Gee, England look look good. Uh, the USA and Wales with that um, with that draw, it might be between those two if they both get beaten by England. Who beats Iran by more? It's a pretty fascinating Group B there, um, especially with the draw between the USA and Wales today. <laughs> Tonight, day three in Qatar, we go into groups C and D. We get our first look at Argentina at 11 o'clock tonight. They're on a 36-match unbeaten run against a Saudi Arabian side who are ranked outside the top 50 in the world and shipped five in their opening game four years ago against Russia. Do you fear a bit for Saudi Arabia? Of course. Um, There's not a tougher ask in world football at any time to take on an Argentinian side. And an Argentinian side on that kind of run, and an Argentinian side, I wrote down one word, Messi. I just think it's um, a bit like the Gareth Bale story. These guys make headlines. It's a match made for Messi. Uh, It's a World Cup made for Messi. I've got both my fingers crossed that Messi does turn up at this tournament and do something just a little bit special. I think he might get a, a nice start with the Saudi Arabia match. 2am, it's Denmark and Tunisia, both teams at their sixth World Cup as Group D is underway. The second game in Group D is the 8 o'clock match, which I'm really looking forward to. France against Australia, France defending champions. Australia, of course, our closest neighbours at this uh, tournament. They've got to the last five World Cups, including this one, but don't win at World Cups very often. We talked in the preview uh, podcast we did, Chody, about winners not doing well backing up. Mm. I mean, France are in a group with Australia, Denmark and Tunisia. Surely the same fate that others have, uh, have suffered of not getting out of the group after winning the World Cup won't happen here. They'll at least get out of that group, won't they? Have to, uh, unless the World Cup hoodoo is real. Um, yeah. the, the hoodoo could get them because it would be an absolute supernatural event for them not to get out of the group. It'd be supernatural for them not to beat Australia. I don't, you know, I, I can't see Australia getting getting close to them really in terms of uh, football. You can always stay close in terms of score. You can you can stay in a game, as we saw this morning, I thought Wales stayed in the game, just didn't go away and then pinch something at the end. So they can do that. Mbappe, everyone's talking about, is this his time to shine? Um, but Australia, gee, they'll be up for it. What a match to open your World Cup game, uh, your World Cup journey with. Australia versus France. A good one to watch. Yeah, and uh, from a Wellington point of view, which is where we're both from, uh, we hope Cam Devlin gets a gets a uh, gets a run for Australia. Um, indications are that he he might um, he might feature at this World Cup. He's in the squad, obviously, and and what a meteoric uh, rise for for Cam Devlin. The other game overnight is the five o'clock kickoff between Mexico and Poland. Mexico at their eighth straight World Cup. They've got out of the group in all of the last seven, but then been beaten in the round of 16. So they're a a round of 16 side. Poland at just their fourth World Cup since 1990. Haven't got out of the group in their last three. Always enjoy watching the passion of Mexico and their fans. The Robert Lewandowski factor for Poland. Uh, What do we expect to happen when Mexico come up against Poland at five o'clock tomorrow morning? Well, I thought about Mexico, the perennial qualifiers, and that's it, you know, the, and then end of story. And then you think about the goals that Lewandowski brings to Poland, a side that hasn't been out of the group play since the 80s. Um, so they will probably um, go in underdogs. I think Mexico would be favoured in the group. Um, not a lot of goals in this one. I think I, I sort of go draw here. I think, I think this has got a draw, a low-scoring draw. Last time I said there was going to be a low-scoring game, England whacked in six, so take that for what it's worth. Who's the big name for Mexico? Jimenez, Raul Jimenez. Hasn't played in a wee while for, for Wolves, so sort of coming out of nowhere to try and get the goals. He's their top goal, goal scorer, I think, but it was three penalties, wasn't it, in yeah. qualifying? So, so they're clearly not a free-flowing, free-scoring side against a Polish side that will be... They'll be good, uh, and with Lewandowski, they've got goals, but for me, could even be the no-score draw.
Could be the first nil all of the tournament. So on Sky Sport, 11 o'clock tonight, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, 2 a.m. Denmark, Tunisia, 5 a.m. Mexico, Poland, and then 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, France v. Australia. We'll have a fresh podcast dropping for you tomorrow, wrapping up all of those games and then previewing the Nets next night's action, which includes the likes of Croatia, runners-up last time, Germany, Spain, Costa Rica, who have cruelly taken New Zealand's place at this tournament, Belgium and Canada, so the games keep coming thick and fast, and the, uh, the teams that we're really looking forward to seeing keep coming thick and fast as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, Chody. We'll chat tomorrow. Fully immersed at this stage in the football pony. More than luck you're adding. Loving it. The FIFA World Cup is live on Sky Sports. Oh, See every game of football's ultimate showcase. Glorious! You need to subscribe to Sky's title and Sky Sport to watch this premium content. For details, see sky.co.nz.